you and Lisa. You and Lisa. Okay, thank you. Please silent yourself if you haven't already. My name is Cynthia Smith and I will be your moderator for this evening's class. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh or Elohim and the operation of the eternal purpose, pattern and plan operating during eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year of 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year of 1958. We held classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Tampa branch was established in 1996. At this time, I would like to introduce you to the Dean of the Tampa branch, Dr. Joe Turner, and President Dr. Cynthia Smith. In this school, we used a true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our father and his son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He really chose a cloud to symbolize himself because the cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edge of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within a pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man cannot perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given to salvation, and we must know that name. 
So the simple yet intelligent question that we should all ask ourselves is, what was the name of the savior during the time he walked the airplane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also at the school, we teach about the divine pattern of the universe. It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in the vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we shall prove that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional objectives and aims of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons, offering a mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Nine, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby men can be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Ten, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. We have class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Pam Turner. We will have a musical selection by, by Dr. Lisa Zizi. Our scripture lesson this evening will be Colossians, the first chapter, which will be read by Dr. Darlene Webster. Our readers tonight are Drs. Darlene Webster and Lisa Zizi. Good evening, class. Let's all bow our hearts and mind to our Heavenly Father through Yahshua the Messiah. And thank you, Yahshua, for allowing us to continue to know about your amazing purpose and plan down at the end of this age when all of this craziness is going on in the world. And, and you just keep us in this, oh gosh, in this amazing state of, of peace in the kingdom where we can have comfort um, and righteousness, peace, and joy. And we, we also want to thank you just for continuing to reveal your incredible mysteries to us. And, and not just, uh, you know, on a superficial level, but through concrete witnesses so that we are left knowing with, beyond a shadow of a doubt that, um, that the, you know, Yahweh is indeed real, that he's waiting and for this thing to be wrapped up uh, so that we can all go home. Um, and with that, let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, Pam, I'm going to sing um, a song that's a remake. Can you um, not record the song, please? Yeah. Yeah, I'll go Thank ahead you. and pause. Thank you. Um, this is Hallelujah. 
just um, wait till you hear it. Um, I'm okay. just looking for it here. I'm going to pause. Darlene, can you read the scripture? You're on mute. You're, Darlene, you're on mute. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. That's Colossians. Which chapter? Yes. Which which chapter? Oh, first. First. Oh, thank you. Saul, an apostle of Yahshua the Messiah, by the will of Yahweh and Timothy, our, father, our brother, to the sons and faithful brethren in the Messiah, which are at Colossus, grace be unto you and peace from Yahweh, our Father and our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. We give thanks to Yahweh, the Father of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, praying always for you. Since we heard of your faith in the Messiah, Yahshua, and of the love which ye have to all the sons, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit as it do doth also in you since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of Yahweh in truth. As ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of the Messiah, who also declared unto us your love in the spirit. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will and in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of Yahweh unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of Elohim, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the sons in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who in the image of the invisible L, the first cause of all creation, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dom dominions or principalities for, or powers. All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things have been permanently placed, and he is the head of the body, the assembly, the assembly, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence among all. For it pleased the Father 
that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If ye continue in the, in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I saw and made a minister who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of the Messiah in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the assembly whereof I am made a minister according to the steward, stewardship which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of Yahweh. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his son, sons to whom Yahweh would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the nations, which is the Messiah in you, the only hope of glory, which we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Yahshua the Messiah, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. That was Colossians, first chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, well, this is starting out it's a pretty good class <laughs> great prayer and song and scripture um so i'd like to uh ask for our first speaker uh dr jennifer marshall excuse me we had a little problem there for a minute i really thank you for asking me to speak However, I really can't think of anything at this time to say, but I do thank you. Um, I'm going to just listen tonight. Thank you very much. Okay, um, no problem. So our, our next speaker will be... Um, okay. uh, Dr. Charles Marshall. <laughs> you threw me for a loop, Jimmy. Had re rethink my strategy. Okay, here, let me get this straightened up here. Okay, I guess I should say I don't have really anything to say either, but uh, <laughs> I guess I won't get away with that one. So uh, we'll just start uh, this scripture here, there, there is, boy, there's so many ways you can go. There's so many things here. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's just start at, uh, in the Colossians, the first chapter. Let's start about uh, 12, please. 
Darlene, you want to go or you want me to? You can, you, you go. Uh, okay. Okay, thanks. Colossians first chapter. Paul, an apostle of Yahshua the Messiah, by the will of Yahweh and Timotheus, our brother, to the sons and faithful brethren in the Messiah, which are at Coloss. Grace be to, unto you and peace from Yahweh, our father, and Yahshua the Messiah. Where you we at? Give thanks. Lisa, I think I'm Charles with like 12. I apologize. Did I miss that? Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I thought I was just not thinking. Sorry about that. Colossians 1.12. Mm -hmm. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the sons in light. Now that's, uh, I tell you what, the longer you're in class, the longer I'm in class, the more I understand this. And the more I understand that before I came into class, and with talking to people out here in the world uh, that they do not have any idea what this is about. It's, 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 it's amazing to me that, that uh, we can be so in, much in the dark. And if it wasn't for the fact that Yahweh has made us to be partakers of him who is light, he is the light in the darkness of this world. We wouldn't recognize it. We wouldn't comprehend it. We wouldn't see it. It would just be like the children of Israel back there in Israel uh, when they were uh, in bondage and the uh, 10 plagues and, the, and the, uh, the plague of darkness was there. Now, the children of Israel were in the light, but the Egyptians and the, and the people around them were in darkness because they couldn't comprehend the light. And that is just an example showing in the Old Testament of what's really going on today also, that how we are the children of the light, but the world around us and the people around us cannot begin to comprehend it. And for that, if nothing, I mean, there's so much, but if nothing else, we should be thankful for, but there's so many things to be thankful for. That's just one. Would you read on, please? 13, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. That's just what I was talking about. Go on ahead, please. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image of the invisible Elohim, the firstborn of every creature. Now, he's the firstborn of every creature, and he's the image of Elohim. And people in the world out here, uh, they do not even understand Elohim or who Elohim is. And they do. And of course, they don't understand, you know, the, the so-called Godhead or, you know, knowing and understanding that it's all Yahweh, Yahweh manifesting in shape and form that can only be seen in divine visions and revelations, <clears throat> and then taking on shape and form in the flesh, coming on down into the flesh and taking on shape and form. And it's all Yahweh. It's not separate individuals. It's not separate. So they have a hard time understanding th the things that we understand because first of all, they do not have a good foundation and everything that they believe, th that they believe, and, and, and I'll just go back to when I, uh, first came down to class and I was told I was told that everything you ever thought about God is wrong and I kind of scoffed at that one I thought well no come on I, I there's I got some things right there's some things I know that are right you know I mean I know I know God is love you know stuff like that but I didn't even but at that time I didn't understand who God was didn't even know his name you understand? And not only that, but I didn't even understand really what true love was. All the love that I based, everything that I knew about love was based upon carnality. Uh, I'll just face it, lust and carnality and, and stuff like that. You know, all my, and my love was, uh, you know, all about self-serving Chuck. You know, if you love me, I'd love you. But if you didn't like me, what well, the heck with you? You know, this kind of stuff. 
didn't begin to understand what true love was till you come into this a teaching and this understanding and you understand you know that love is so much more and so far above that and it's just like uh just well you know i you can look around in the in the institute and from a physical standpoint from a carnal standpoint everyone i know i can point at and pick at things that is not really right about them and believe me i can look in the mirror and see the same thing in me but the thing of it is what we have learned to do i've got my faults you've got your faults we've all got our own faults but when you see yashua in a person and when you see that that person you see loves yashua you look, you're able to look past that flesh and you're able to look past all these little idiot, uh, I call them idiot syncrasies that we have, you see, and we can see Yahshua in that person and that causes, me, it causes, I'll put it like this, it causes me to give them slack, you understand, and understand that they are like me, they're going through things they're going through physical things they're going through mental and uh, thinking and spiritual things and and this is a war that we're in i understand that we're on the winning side i understand that we have the winning general i understand that we have the we have the winning war plan you see of salvation that yahshua has given us but these are the things that when we come into the class, this is what's separating us from the people out, th out in the world. And it's just like, I never understood why in the Bible, in the book, it said that you were to love your enemies. Now, I don't know if you guys have got problems with that one, because I can think of a couple of people that that's pretty, you know, <laughs> that's a pretty tough one, you understand? But I also understand that the only reason I see anything and the only reason you see anything is because of Yahshua the Messiah. And I also understand that the reason why they don't understand, the reason why they don't see things, and the reason why they are the way they are is because that's the way Yahweh has made them. And that is what Yahweh has put within them and they got the case of, I can't help it. So therefore, with the understanding that we have, you see, it's hard for me to get mad, although uh, I won't say it's hard for me to get mad because sometimes I do anyhow, you see, but it gives you an understanding of a completely different way of looking at things. It gives you a completely different way of judging. It gives you a completely different way you see, because Yahshua is working his work within us to make us as him, as it's going to be talking about here later on in, in this uh, in this chapter. Okay, could you read on, please? 16. Oh, I'm on mute. 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Now, the world doesn't understand this one. I had a conversation with a lady here the other day. Uh, she was uh, going around doing a survey uh, she, it, about abortion. And uh, I, I seen a, a cross around her neck. So I knew that she was a Christian. And so I got to talking to, to talking to her about some things. And uh, she said that uh, that God, you know, didn't 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 create the devil. He didn't make evil. And I said, uh, I said, well, I said, you better check. You better check uh, Isaiah on that one, because in Isaiah it says that he's the one he creates evil. Yeah. So, and here, even here in the New Testament, even if she is just a so-called New Testament Christian, which is what 
the denominations I was in before I came into class, that's what they always used to say, that we were New Testament Christians. That's why we didn't really go back into the Old Testament that much, except for some cute little stories, you see. But right here, it says in 16, it says, but for by him, all things are cre were created that are in heaven, that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, principalities, powers, all things were created by him and for him. And she also said that Lucifer, you see, that that was, that was uh, uh, Yahweh's or God. I, I use the term Yahweh and she had heard it. But that Yahweh, you see, uh, I just lost the train of thought there. <laughs> Boom. Uh, oh, that, that, uh, that Lucifer you see, was, was uh, the one that uh, tried to keep, keep us from spiritual things and tried to, and tried to keep us uh, from understanding and that Satan was different than Lucifer and he was responsible for the creation or the carnal things. And I mean, there are so many things out here that, that and, and, I, and, I, and I looked at her and I says, well, can you show me that one in the book? And she said, no. I said, well, I says, unless you can show me something like that in a book, I said, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't believe it. And I don't have, a, I don't have to believe it because everything it says in the, also in the book that to prove all things and everything I've been talking to you about and showed you, I have went in the book and showed and told you where it was at. They don't understand these concepts and it's unfortunate and, you know, in talking to these people like that and in talking to her, I was not trying to put her down. I was not trying to make her feel like that she didn't know anything. I was trying. It's like a fisherman and you're throwing out bait. You're trying to find something that you see that 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 they're going to see and it's going to get their interest. And maybe they will start asking questions or maybe someday the lady will walk back up here and want to talk to me about some of the things that we talked. You see, we don't do it with animosity. We don't do it to make them look bad. We, we do it, you see, to try to get them to see some point, to see something so that they will take interest. And then that way we can they can sit down and they can find out the real truth about Yahweh and his plan and purpose. So all things, everything was created, even evil was created by Yahweh. And what, but now to the world out here, that just doesn't seem right. But once you come into class and once you go through the law and once you go through the prophets and once it is proven to you, you see, well, to me, there's this, I, I can't deny it. And I thank Yahshua for that. Because if it was not, once again, I'll, I, I can't say this enough. If it wasn't for Yahshua in us, none of us would see anything. And we have saw people that have come down to these classes and have an academic knowledge of this teaching and can get on the floor and run a train of thought and run a train of thought a lot better than I could ever imagine that I could. But yet they are no longer in school or they're caught up in other uh, doctrines that have come about, you see, because Yahshua was not in them, but they had as much, if not more, carnal, physical knowledge of Yahweh, you understand, but they could not flip it into the spirit, and they couldn't flip it into spirit because of the Holy Spirit. And that's something that we just need to just thank Yahshua for, in, in no uncertain terms. Uh, could you read the next verse, please? We're at 17, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Everything is by him. It's all for him. It's all about him. When I came into class once again, I thought that when I read in the Bible, I was reading the Bible about me, or in other words, about how, what I could learn for me. You understand? But since coming into class now, I realize that it's all about Yahweh. 
It's all about his son, Yahshua. And it's all about Yahshua trying to get us to have an intimate understanding of our heavenly father. And these people out here will admit they don't know nothing about God. The understanding that we have, that Yahweh has given us, each and every one of us, no matter how much understanding we have, is head and shoulders above what the world has out here. And once again, that is something we should be so thankful for. Could you read the next ver uh, <clears throat> verse, please? 18, and he is the head of the body, the church, the assembly who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. See, in all things, not us, in all things he has preeminence. You understand? And by getting to know Yahweh, by understanding Yahweh, by understanding Yahshua, who is showing us Yahweh, you see, and Yahshua is Yahweh, by understanding that, you see, we are, we are, he is the head and we are the body and we are becoming just like him. In my case, I've got to admit, it's a very slow growth, but at least I can see growth. And if, and so that is the encouragement that I have, you see. So read on, please. 19, for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having, made, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. See, everything is for him. Everything is, he is using everything everything in the creation to tell us about him, everything. Now, I am not very uh, 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 edumacated, as we might say, you see, but I, I watch programs on, on uh, TV about science. And here a while back, I think I probably brought this out before, they were talking about in the universe that there's, it is made up of more dark matter. Now, I'm not talking about black holes, I'm talking about black matter, there is more black matter in the universe than anything else. And that they don't, und and the reason why they call it dark matter or black matter is because they don't understand it. They don't know what it is, but they do know that this matter is like, if you will, the controlling thing in the universe. It's what holds things together. It's, it, it, it helps with the laws. It, it's, I'm not going to say dictate because they didn't say the word dictate, but it, it helps with the laws of everything in the universe. It's what keeps planets from crashing into each other. And it, it, it's the law. It's the order of the universe. And they don't know what that is. Now, mm. I barely got out of high school. Back in the day, they'd let you out. Of, if they knew you were going to go in the service, they'd let you have your diploma because diploma because they was going to get rid of you and you were going to go into the service. And that's basically what I was, you see. Mm -hmm. So I'm not very bright, wasn't very educated. But here I, thanks to Yahshua, has mm -hmm. shown me that what that dark matter is. is showing me, you see, what is holding this universe together and that mm -hmm. is showing me, and I know who that is. And I can name who that is by name, mm -hmm. Yahweh. Yeah. So you understand it doesn't even matter what your education is. It does not matter what your background is. It does not matter what your childhood was like. It doesn't matter about any of that stuff. All that matters is, is that Yahshua has set us down and giving us a knowledge and an understanding of him, you see, to glorify him. Because in Christianity, what was we doing? By glorifying Jesus, we were glorifying ourselves. And that's another thing we didn't know about. And we come in here and realize that all glory, all honor goes to Yahweh, you see, 
and that we should be just happy to be a living, breathing molecule in his plan and purpose that he is enlightened with his understanding and knowledge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know, you know, what more can you say, you know? Could you read the next verse, please? Next verse is it, <laughs> 21. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now has he made has he reconciled? Y'all, you know, I, 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 uh, I don't think uh, anybody's going to go around telling me, but I don't think I'm going to go around telling anybody, you know, about my wicked mind. Some of the things I think sometimes, sometimes I'm, I'm set, and I'll sit there and I'll think, and I'll be sitting there in class and get this stupid, weird thought that comes to my head. It's like, oh, what the heck is going, you know, get out of here, you know? <laughs> I mean, no. I'm probably the only one that does that, but, no. but, but, you know, I mean, and just in life, the way sometimes the things that we think, and sometimes even the things that we do, <laughs> you see, and, but he loves us. Yes, he does. And he's, and, and we are children. Now, I don't know about you, but as a child, I wasn't, uh, I, I was a pretty hell raising kid. Hmm? So, you know, and uh, we are children in yes, this gospel, you understand? And as we're getting older, hopefully we're getting better. I know that I have changed a lot and I have seen people been in the Institute for quite a while and I've grown up around a lot of people in the gospel and I have seen great, great changes in them, in the way they act, in the way they think, in the way they purport themselves. You understand? It is a growing process. And that's another thing. We've got to give each other a little bit of slack, you yes. see, because not everybody's on my level, not every, and, and I'm not on a lot of other people's above me level, you understand? And so therefore, we've all got to, and what we're here for is like when Moses went up on top of that mountain and that they were going over into Canaan's land and they were, and they're, and uh, Yahshua had the children of Israel fighting over there. Moses was standing up there and had, was holding his arms up. Now, when he held his arms up, the children of Israel prevailed. When his arms started going down, when he started getting tired, oh, law, you know, oh, they would lift up his arms as if it was the law and the prophets, you understand? And the children of Israel would start winning the battle again. And that's us. You see, we will sometimes get tired. We will sometimes have these thoughts and we will sometimes go through these things, you see, and it starts wearing us down. But thinking of Yahweh, thinking of Yahshua and what he's showing us and what he's doing for us, because I can even look back on my life, even from a physical standpoint, you understand, and see that where I am today and the comforts that I have today was not a product of Chuck's brilliant thinking. You understand? It was a product of Yahshua providing me and showing me a way. And sometimes I went kicking and screaming, you understand? And showing me and putting me in the position that I'm in today, even from a physical standpoint. He is looking after us. He loves us. We are his children. And just like you love your children, and believe me, sometimes when your children do not act and do not do the things that you think they should do or do the things that they should do, you still love them. You know, mm -hmm. you know, you know what I'm talking about. You uh -huh. still love them. And that's Yahweh showing us that he loves us. Even when we fail, he will pick us up and he loves us. Now he's showing that to me. And with that witness that I have just within myself, you know, is, is, a, is, is, is a, a testimony to Yahshua in itself. And each and every one, it's not just me, each and every one of us have a testimony. Each and every one of us can tell and talk about 
how Yahshua has helped them through this or helped mm -hmm. them through that. And all the physical is good that he's helped us, but it's the spiritual. It's the understanding of him that is important. But he even protects us from a physical standpoint to put our mind at ease so that we can take and concentrate more on the spiritual things of mm -hmm. him. You understand? Could you read the next one, please? Mm -hmm. Ooh, and you, okay, 22, 22 in the body, yep, in the body of his flesh through death. Um, Okay, I'm going to start at 21. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now has he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. This is just what I was talking about, you yes. see. Yes, it yep. is. I exactly. mean, it's just, it's just this. I, I, I sometimes look and, and analyze some of the things that we say in this class and try to, and try to put myself back in the position of before I came into class mm -hmm. and, and hearing this information. And you know something? It's no wonder people think we're a cult. It's no mm -hmm. wonder people think we're crazy as hell, you see, with some of the things that, with some of the things that we say, like for instance, no free will. Oh my goodness, even a lot of people in class have a time with that one, you understand? But just to say things like that, people will look at you and go, you guys are really weird. <laughs> but when you look down through the law and when you look down through the prophets and you see how Yahweh has always, always been in total control and everything happened exactly the way he said it was gonna happen in, on the time that he said it was gonna happen, you see, and I look back in my own life and see the same things happening. And you can look in your life and see the same things happening. Mm -hmm. And you get in the book here and even in the Old Testament, and then you get into the New Testament and the New Testament ties right in. It's not saying anything different. It's just the New Testament is showing us from a spiritual aspect where the Old Testament was showing how it was set up with in the physical yeah. And that physical was trying to point out and show us spiritual principles, but it wasn't until Yahshua died, buried, resurrected on that cross, just like it said, all the way down through the law and the prophets. Then on the day of Pentecost, poured out his spirit, just like it talks about in Daniel, just looks like it talks about in Ezekiel, just like it talks about in Isaiah, that he was going to pour his spirit out. You see, he has done that. And we can see the proof. We have proof. We have witnesses. And the world out here is basing their belief and basing what they believe on, on false witnesses. And what we're seeing in the earth plane right now is a, a prime example. Because we have been fighting this fight, well, ever since I came into class, which has been uh, almost 50 years, you understand. And Dr. Kinley was 1931. When he had this vision, started fighting the fight. And there's been people in this school fighting the fight all the way down through, see, yeah. to try to get people to understand the truth because there's only one truth. But yet, see, you look out here in the world right now and there's all these lies. Everything that is being purported out here, you see, are lies, lies, lies. And it's not just the United States. It's all over the world right now. The government in Israel, you see, is failing. There's governments all over the world right now that are failing and being yeah. taken over by dictators. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. telling you. But you know something? That's okay. At one time before I came into class, I would have been so angry. I would have been upset. I would have been beside myself. What the heck is going on here? But because Yahshua has shown me that he is in control That's and right. he has said that these things have got to happen. He That's has right. said, look, you look back before you see at the tower, of all everything in the man's mind was their vain imagination. You see, and it's the same exact thing now, you see, 
all these people, all they have in their minds is vain imaginations. And it's all about vanity. It's all about power. And it's all about money. You see, this, that's the corruption of this world. But we, we have to live in it. We have to put up with a lot of it. But we don't, but I'm not bummed out. I am not down. I am not uh, depressed about it. You see, as a matter of fact, I feel good because I can see that things are going just exactly the way Yahweh has pre pre yes. presented it and is doing it. You yes. see, just like he's doing everything within me, he's doing everything within you, he's doing yes. everything within this world out here. And hopefully we don't have long to go. But there's one good thing about being old. If the creation don't go out right away, I probably will. So one way or another, you see. And, mm -hmm. and it's like, well, I mean, it's easy to say when you're not dying, when you're not on death's doorstep, it's easy to say, yeah. but I'm not afraid of death, yeah. you see. Mm -hmm. But we'll see how I think once I get on my deathbed, you know, that, <laughs> but with Joshua, you understand. Mm -hmm. but I see, but that's just it. I understand that with Yahshua's help, I'm okay. But if it's yeah. Chuck, he'll fall apart. Yes. Yes. So read the next mm -hmm. uh, verse, please. 23. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you mm -hmm. have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof mm -hmm. I, Paul, am made a minister... Now, now, the thing of it is, is talking about that it was preached to every creature. Now, we looked at this, we look at the pandemic, you see, we look at uh, a COVID-19, you see, as something that was bad. And as a matter of fact, we had to stop a lot of the, uh, the a lot of the classes had to stop meeting in person because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We couldn't meet no more. So yeah. what, did, what happened? Yeah. Yahweh just happened to have this you know, uh, uh, Zoom thing, yeah. and we started going on Zoom. Yeah. And now, because we are going on Zoom, but we are going back to our regular meetings, and that's good. I'm not going to you know, say anything bad about that, because it's good to get together with the brethren, yeah, and be so. with the brethren. But Zoom has mm -hmm. taken and put this gospel all over the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People can watch this on Zoot on YouTube because they well, it's taken a, from Zoom and then put on the mm -hmm. YouTube and people can go on mm -hmm. the YouTube and I've been on YouTube you know uh, looking about this or that guitars or this or something or another you know and I'll be watching you know watching these little things about the showing up uh, doing this or that and in all the little boxes along the side there you're seeing an IDMR you're mm -hmm. seeing yeah. one of the Zoom <laughs> classes. That's true. You know, just right there, you don't, you're not looking for it. The people ain't looking for it, but boom, yeah. it's there. And then if their curiosity gets up, see, they can take and they click on there and they can go to class. Yes. So what's happening in this world right now is absolute, it's just, it's beautiful. <laughs> you understand? You see, with what Yahweh is doing. Uh, mm -hmm. 24 please and uh i'm going to stop at 26 so you can think about another speaker i don't want to take the whole class so okay 24 <laughs> who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of yashua in my flesh for his body's sake which is the assembly you know we think we ha we think we have it but look at yashua Joshua didn't have a permanent roof over his head, wandered around with 12 guys, probably didn't get to take a lot of showers a lot, you know, he walked around with 12 <laughs> stinky guys, you know, being, being uh, persecuted by yes. the religious leaders, mm -hmm. you see, uh, not having good things being said about him, mm -hmm. you see, then knowing now he knew he was going to have to get up on that cross and die he knew he was going to have to feel mm -hmm. the pain and this he may have been elohim but he still felt pain and suffering you understand and he went through that and he did that for me 
and I look at the little bit I have to put up with. Look at the apostles. Yes. The apostles were killed for what they preached. Now, I don't know of anybody in the Institute yet, I'll put it like that, that has been killed because they're preaching this gospel. You understand? So, I mean, we think we have it bad sometimes. Look at you, what Yahshua went through. Look at what the apostles and the early assemblies went through. And did they have controversies? Hell, yes, they did. Okay. They were trying to get people to understand they didn't have to be under the law anymore, that they didn't have to be baptized, that they didn't have to be circumcised. You mm -hmm. understand? They had all kinds of things. They had to try to, they had to get that law out of those people for them to understand that now it is spiritual and it is not physical. It is not carnal. So they had their problems back then, what they went through. And I feel that what we go through and what we're going through now in these ages, in, in this age, okay, is, is, is not as bad as what they had to go through. So once again, I feel very lucky. I feel very fortunate, you see. And read the next verse and I'll be done. Because I've already talked about that this is a mystery, so I don't have to get well, into 26. Um, I got to read 25. Okay. Wherefore, I am made a minister according to the dispensation of Yahweh, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of Yahweh. See, now he was made a minister, you see, according to the dispensation of Elohim, which is given to me, you see, him for you or us. You see, it was given to him. Now he's giving it to us. The very same thing that Yahweh gave Yahshua, he is now giving to us. And in the ages and dispensations, we are going to go on learning about him. It is going to be, it is going to be joy, joy, joy time. You see, because we're going on without the worry of the physical, without the worry of the flesh, without the worry of being persecuted by this uh, satanic spirit. You see, just pure joy. And with that, I thank you very much. And all praise, glory, and honor goes to Yahshua and, and, and his father, Yahweh. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Chuck. Me too. Uh, that was great. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to just uh, take it from here. I don't know if I'm going to use all the time or not. Um, I'm, I, I do feel slightly under the weather um, dealing with this sciatic thing. And um, um, I, I'm hoping to get through the week so that I can make it to the conference. And uh, we were going to do a lot of golfing. I guess I'm not going to be doing any golfing. Oh. Maybe Yashua wants me to sit around and uh, be with the brethren. Oh, my gosh. Wow. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> So anyways, um, I would like to share my screen real quick. Uh, let's see. Um, huh? Oh, you stopped share? Okay. All right, here we go. Okay. So this was uh, sent out from uh, Rhonda Brazil, who's uh, a dear friend and uh, a wonderful Yashwin, someone I've known, you know, uh, most of my life. And she sends out quotes from, from Dr. Kinley. And uh, I'll just go ahead and read it. And so okay. this is a, a quote. Dr. Kinley said, um, the kingdom of Yahweh is as of now. Or in other words, see, <laughs> you know, the people... People out here, all right, uh, they do the Lord's Prayer, okay? And in one part of the Lord's Prayer, it, it says, uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, it's not, it, the way they hear that is the kingdom will be coming. And that's just not the way it is. See, the, the topic of the, uh, this, um, of the event we have going on in Orlando is, is uh, you know, what is the kingdom of Yahweh? And 
the first thing that you have to know uh, concerning that is the kingdom of Yahweh is as of now. Okay, it's it's not something that see the, the world is looking forward to it. They missed it. Okay, this kingdom began with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. That's when you see the spiritual kingdom that we're in now, the kingdom age of grace that we're in now. That began on that day of Pentecost. And Dr. Killing goes on and says, you are in the kingdom. It has already been set up. And I do mean here in the world. See, people also think, well, the kingdom's up above sun, moon, and stars and you know that that's where we're going no you're in the kingdom now if you have the holy spirit and if you don't get the holy spirit now while you're in this creation once you leave this creation it will be too late yes and and i want to say something too about that okay you know um you know, chuck i thought you know, kind of really beautifully explain the changes that he went through, you know, coming into class and that, you know, he's not saying he's got it all together, but, you know, none of us do. And it, but yet we know that we have a, a revelation that the world just doesn't understand. And, you know, like the, the example of him talking to this woman, she probably thought you were smoking something. Okay, <laughs> you know, and, you, and, and I, I've run into that, uh, you know, being working in the sciences. Um, if, if you believe in God at all, they think you're an idiot. Yes. Okay, people don't, people don't have uh, spiritual conversations at my work, except, okay, in places where I don't usually go, because go, I work in the laboratories and research. Um, but there's a whole clinic there and, and, you know, there's a lot of God talking going on there because mm -hmm. people get cancer and they die. Okay? Um, it, it can't, cancer is, is still a very uh, threatening condition. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, um, uh, it's it, so, so, you know, there's a lot of God talk going on over there. And, but, but you see, for the most part, see, I, I remember one time bringing up Yahweh to two friends at work. And they literally laughed out loud when they when they found out that I believed in a creator and that his name was Yahweh. They literally laughed in my face. And these were friends. Okay. Mm -hmm. They just thought it was so ridiculous. Okay. Now, you are in that kingdom now. And if you don't get in that kingdom now, not that you can, but if Yahshua doesn't bring you into that kingdom, it's already, it, it's, it's too late once you die, okay? So you are in the kingdom. It has already been set up, and I do mean here in the world, all right? I can't make that any plainer. Mm -hmm. And as Paul put it, says he translated us, and this is, this is why I got the scripture. He's translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, and that, that was in the, uh, um, the, uh, the 13th verse. Now, if you look up the word translate, okay, and I, uh, mm -hmm. let, me, let me do that real quickly. It's basically a simple definition. It's to move from one place or condition to another, mm -hmm. all right? Now, we have been translated into a spiritual kingdom. We have been moved. We have been uh, placed into a different state or condition not from a physical standpoint, mm -hmm. but from a spiritual standpoint. And that, that we, we now are, are in a spiritual kingdom, you know, of Yahshua the Messiah. And so we've been translated into that kingdom through the preaching of this gospel mm -hmm. and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I have um, the definition, Joel. Oh, okay, yeah. go ahead. Uh, translate, uh, first definition, express the sense of words or text in another language. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the second definition is move from one place or condition to another. Yes. Okay. See, we yes. can move from one place or condition to another. Mm -hmm. 
Do you want so me anyway, to? so good. do you recall, now he, he says here, okay, he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Do you recall and do you remember that he sent them out to preach the kingdom of heaven was at hand, okay, when they went out, see, he sent those apostles out, okay, and he also, after the transfiguration, sent out 70 men, okay, now this was in fulfillment of what went on back there. Uh, with with the uh, seventy elders, where where they were they were shown that vision, and then they had to go down and tell the people what they saw. All right, and so they see Yahshua, uh, you see, um, transfigured, and then they went out to preach that gospel. So he sent them, and they preached that the kingdom of heaven was at hand. All right, mm -hmm. now when they did this, when 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 Yahshua had to had them do this. These people were not thinking of a spiritual kingdom. They were thinking of a physical kingdom. Okay. okay. They had no way to understand what a spiritual kingdom is. Okay. Until that day of Pentecost. Now, if it was way down here, nearly 2000 years, and it hasn't been, and it ain't been set up yet. Now that mm -hmm. wouldn't hardly make no sense. But now, the reason why some of us cannot appreciate that the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of Yahweh or Yahshua is at hand, is, is as of now, I'm sorry, is because we haven't been, uh, we, we haven't never repented or apologized. We haven't come to the knowledge of it. We just don't realize it. Now, if you come into this class and have been in class uh, any reasonable length of time. I know that you had to repent. Okay. Yes. And apologize to Yahweh. Okay. Yeah. For for any number of things, but mostly that you you see believed a lie. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that you have to repent of that. And the word repent, you see, uh, basically just means to to change your mind. Okay. And it but it, we know it takes the Holy Spirit to do that. So, so here we have a conference coming up, and uh, the topic is is um, is the, you know what is the kingdom. So this is what I've kind of had in my mind. And yes. uh, if you could give for me Isaiah eight and twenty, please. Isaiah 8 and 20. I have it. Okay. Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Okay. So if we want to find out what the kingdom is, okay, you got to go back to the law and the prophets. Oh, now, Pam, could you pull up the Moses chart, please? Actually, I need to stop share. That's right. Okay. Uh, could you pull up the, the Moses chart for me, please? Okay. Now, um, while she's doing that, okay, here we go. Okay. So now, if you look back, you got an example, okay? You got to have an example of a kingdom back in the Long Prophet. Mm -hmm. So you have the children of Israel, okay, uh, basically through Moses, okay, the children of Israel, okay, came up out of Egypt, all right, through the parted waters of the Red Sea, and then, mm -hmm. you see, came to this mountain. But Sinai was not the kingdom that they inherited, okay, and neither was Egypt, okay. This was a, uh, uh, a transitional period for them. Right. And what what happened with the children of Israel was that they uh, 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 basically uh, the, the 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 ones that were raised in Egypt, okay, the ones that were raised, and you know, Egypt in Sodom uh, and Gomorrah, these are all okay. In in it talks about this in the Book of Revelation, but these are all you see examples of. Uh, you know, th that uh, uh, the kingdom of, the, of, of that satanic spirit. And these mm -hmm. people were raised 
up in Egypt. And we're, and, and, and you know, we've talked about this before, how that once they got up here and Moses went up into this mountain, okay, you see, um, and came back down again, all right, before, be, be, they couldn't even wait 40 days, all right, and right. before they came down and they had made an, an image of this golden calf. And this golden calf wasn't something that just popped out of the fire like it talks about here. That was just a, that was just, <laughs> you know, Aaron got caught, all right? And so he had to come up with something, all right? And that's just not the way it happened. They fashioned it out of, the, out of some of the gold that they brought up with, the, you know, out of Egypt. And yeah. you see, the worship of the golden calf was a major part of the Egyptian religion. religion. You see, these people stunk of Egypt, all right? And therefore, they weren't allowed, and because of their disobedience, and because right. of them really, you see, being uh, from a spiritual standpoint, if I can put it that way, like into the Egyptians themselves, they were not allowed to go into Israel, okay, to go uh, over Jordan, into what uh, would be, you see, the, the first kingdom of, uh, uh, you know, of, of, of Yahweh's people. All right. Now, Moses brought them up out of Egypt. But you see, Moses was not allowed to bring them up into Canaan's land. And there's a reason for that. OK, because this is setting up the principles concerning Yahshua, the Messiah. This is his story. All right. Yeah. Now, was Yahshua, what was the Messiah's name, Moses? All right. No. All right. Now Moses, Moses was, you see, you see, a very special person. I'm not, I'm not disrespecting Moses in any way, shape, or form, but he was not, you see, Yahshua the Messiah. All right. He, you see, there was one with him, and we we talked about that how that down there in Egypt, right. okay, in, in Exodus the the twelfth chapter, that. Um, you know, when, when Aaron and Moses were told how to do the Passover, they were told by Yahweh. And here you have Yahshua talking to Moses and Aaron, and you have Exodus, the 12th chapter. So he was the one that was really instructing them all along, okay? Mm -hmm. But you see, Moses, it, now, now you'll read that it says that his eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. In other words, when he, you see, he was... He was really old, okay, I think, but, okay, he was 80, okay, he was 40 when he came up out of Egypt, spent 40 years in the wilderness, mm -hmm. then went back down into Egypt, okay, to, you see, through Yahweh's instructions to deliver the children of Israel up out of Egypt, and then spent another 40 years in the wilderness because the children of Israel, uh, because of their disobedience, that they went up to spy out the mm -hmm. land for 40 days, and when they came back, you see, uh, Joshua and Caleb came back with the, the true report and the other 10 came back with the false report. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore they had to stay in the, the wilderness one year for every day that they were up in Canaan's land, okay? And, and the, the fact of the matter is they just had no faith. They had no faith in Yahweh. And you know what? If, if there was a way to get faith without the Holy Spirit, the children of Israel should have been prime candidates because they saw the 10 plagues, okay? They saw the waters of the Red Sea parted. They, they saw, you see, that fiery cloud. I mean, look at, here they are making the golden calf and right up on top of the mountain that, that, that they're right next to is a fiery cloud. How stupid can you be? Okay, to think, oh, Yahweh's not real. And this guy, Moses, who went up here in the cloud, well, we, we're not going to see him again. Okay, if there was a way for these people just through uh, uh, a natural means, if I could put it that way, uh, by what they were seeing to believe in Yahweh, they had <laughs> tremendous witnesses for them. But you see, without the Holy Spirit, it, it, you just won't, won't believe it. Unless you see, even if it's told to you, and I forget where that scripture is, you see. But but anyways, 
So you have to have an example of a kingdom back here. And the one that brought them up into that kingdom was, you see, that man, uh, uh, Joshua, the, the son of Nun. Okay. Yes. Now, um, okay. All right. Now, now I'm going to get into some stuff that you guys probably have heard. Um, it, you know, I, I never get tired of hearing it. I know Sarah was working with Joshua and um, I want to work with this a little bit and then kind of uh, 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 get into the kingdom a little bit more. Okay. So it see, it was Joshua or Yahshua uh, properly that brought the Isra Israel up, you see, to the kingdom. He was the one that brought them up into Canaan's land. Okay. Now, him being a tight, see, actually, <laughs> you know, we talk about, you know, like uh, people being a type in a shadow, like uh, Daniel mm -hmm. being a type of Yahshua, Moses being a type of Yahshua, um, mm -hmm. various people being, David being a type of Yahshua. But Joshua, the son of Nun, was not a type of Yahshua. He was Yahshua. Right. That was Yahshua himself. And that he brought them into the kingdom, all right, mm -hmm. that Yahweh had, set, had, had promised uh, all the way back to Abraham, okay? So he was the one that brought, you see, the children of Israel into the kingdom, okay? Now, if you, now, now as far as Joshua and, and who he was, okay, and just, you know, like, um, you know, Dave Willicott, who was the, the dean of uh, uh, Green Bay at one time, you see, before he passed, you know, he, he would he would talk about pinning the tail on the donkey, okay? Mm -hmm. or, or in other words, looking at all the witnesses and seeing who Yahshua was. Mm -hmm. And you go back here to this uh, Yahshua, the son of Nun, and in the word Nun, okay, now Dr. Kinley said, now, you know, and he did a lot of this with words, how that, you know, words... Uh, you know, he, he said it wasn't old man Nunn's kid. You don't read about Mr. and Mrs. Nunn going up to Joshua and, uh, you know, having a conversation or, or inviting him over for dinner, okay? You see, yep. you, 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 he, you, don't, you don't know, you don't read about when he was born. And uh, you see, uh, and, and you don't read anything about his, his, uh, his past. You see, so, so, you know, they, 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 they said he was a young man. Okay. But it, you see, uh, really, if you look up the word none, N-U-N-N in strong, and you can look this up. It's uh, 5125. You don't have to do it. I'll just tell you what it means. It means perpetual. Uh, perpetual. perpetual. It also means perpetuity, uh, which means None literally means no beginning and no, no ending. Mm. All right. Now, you see, uh, uh, now let's go over to Matthew 5, uh, 17 and 18. I read that, darling. Matthew 5, 17 and 18. Darling, I got it. Oh, you have it? Okay, good. Yep. Matthew 5, Wait. 17. Hold on. Yep. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For very, so, I think. So here you have, you see, when Yahshua came in, he was fulfilling, you see, Yahshua, his own self, really. <laughs> you know, it, it's mm -hmm. kind of the thing people say, well, if you want a job done right, do it yourself. Well, mm -hmm. I've done I've, my my experience is I've done a lot of jobs myself that didn't turn out too well. Okay, <laughs> so that 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 may apply to the creator of the universe. Okay, and people kind of think that in their mind, and that's just their their egos popping up and you know getting it, yeah. getting in their way. But you mm -hmm. see, he did the job and he did it himself because nobody else could do it. Okay, so he's fulfilling when Yahshua came in. It's in fulfillment. Of really mm -hmm. all the prophets and everything, but especially, you see, Yahshua the son of Nun, that this was, mm -hmm. you see, the fullness, if I can put it that way, the completeness mm -hmm. of Yahweh Elohim manifested 
in a physical body. You see, Moses had the Holy Spirit, no doubt, but he was not the fullness of the Godhead bodily. This was, Joshua was, uh, you see, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And, and he had that name, um, Yahshua, all right? Now, it does uh, 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 say in some transcripts that Dr. Kinley said that his name was Yahoshua, which means I will be salvation. Now, he was salvation to the children of Israel from a natural standpoint here. But every one of those Israelites that made it into Canaan's land and that got their inheritance, every single one of them died and was buried. Okay. See, this was this was a physical deliverance by Joshua back here, but it did it, it was not time for a, a spiritual okay deliverance, you see, uh, 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 at that time. Now, get for me, please, Exodus 3, 11 and 12. Exodus 3, 11 and 12. And Moses said unto Elohim, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee. With thee and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent, that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. Ye shall serve Elohim upon this mountain. Okay, that's good. And, now, yeah, so, so, so here you have, here you have, you see, Moses, and, mm -hmm. and you see, Moses was a meek man. I mean, yeah. um, I mean, to say that he was meek is an understatement, okay? Mm -hmm. He was, mm -hmm. the reason why Yahweh loved him was because there was none like Moses as far as his meekness, okay? Mm -hmm. And so here Moses is like, wait a minute. <laughs> you want me to go down to Pharaoh and deliver the children of Israel up out of Egypt, okay? Mm -hmm. and, 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 uh, and, and so Yahweh says, Certainly, I will be with thee. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if you brought if you brought that up, pr probably to that Christian lady that was at your front door, Chuck, she probably <laughs> would say, "Well, he was with Moses in spirit." No, it, that's not just, that's yes. not the way it is. Okay. Uh -huh. it's, it's, see, like um, uh, uh, I, I mentioned that my son Jacob got his first apartment, and when he gets back uh, from his his road trip because he's a truck driver now, um, we're gonna. Mm -hmm move uh, the sofa from Judy's house into his house. Now, oh. if you guys have seen that sofa, it's oh. ginormous, okay? It's huge, all right? Now, <laughs> I, you see, now it, when moving day comes and uh, mm. Jacob says, dad, are you gonna help me move this couch? And I say, certainly I will be with thee. Okay, yeah. uh -huh. and I don't show up, and he gives me a call, and I say, I'm with you in spirit, Jacob. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> you think he's gonna be happy about that? No, no he's not gonna be happy. He, he would what you see when, when, when Yahweh said he would be with Moses, he yeah. literally was in a physical body with Moses down here in Egypt, and he went with him. Okay, mm -hmm. now get for me, uh, uh Exodus. Uh, uh, 12 and 1. Um, and then I want Exodus 17, 9 through 14. Do you have it, Lisa? Oh, you want me to get 12? Sure. I, I have 12, 12 and 1, okay? Okay, 12. I'll get 17. Okay. Um, and Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, this month shall be. Pam, could you could you zoom into that 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 tent down there in in Egypt, please? Yes. Okay. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Okay, that's good enough. And then he goes on and talks about that Passover and what they should do. 
Right. And mm -hmm. see, here we have Exodus 12 and 1. I know I pointed this out, but it's just so beautiful. I got to do it again. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is where Yahweh instructed Moses and Aaron. And uh -huh. Yahweh was manifested in this vessel of Yahshua the Messiah. Okay. Now get for me Exodus 17, please. Exodus 17. After, after that, I want Exodus uh, 33 and 11. 33. I have 30, 33 and 11. Okay, read 17 first. Exodus 17 and 9. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men, and go out, fight with Amalek tomorrow. I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of Yahweh in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and fought with Amalek and Moses, Aaron and her, and Moses, Aaron and her went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Okay, now, now Chuck got into this. this actually, um, this is the wrong scripture. I want where uh, it says uh, for Moses to rehearse it in the ears of, of Moses. Are you reading Exodus 17, 9? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, it's my fault. Um, you can probably find it. Yeah, I think what you want, did you want to add 33 and, uh, and 9? 33 and a 9? And nine? So that we're talking about right here. As Moses entered into the meeting tent? Um, no, that's, I do want that, but I, I, that's not the scripture I'm looking for here. I'm looking for okay. Um, okay. rehearse it in Moses, in, in Joshua's. Okay. Um, could use some help, you guys. I'm, I'm looking. looking. Okay. I don't have a, an online concordance, but I'm looking up now. Okay. I mean, it is re rehearsed, right? Okay. Exodus 17 and 14. Okay. Okay, we have it. You have it, Lisa? Yeah. Exodus okay. 17 and 14. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. Okay, so, so they were supposed to, Mo Moses was supposed to write down everything, you see, because Moses is the author of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and he mm -hmm. was instructed to write those things down. Now, mm -hmm. to make sure that he got it right, he had to rehearse it in Joshua's ear Ooh. to make sure that he had it correct, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Now go go to Exodus eleven or thirty three and, and pick it up at eleven, please. Did you want to pick up at eleven? Not seventeen. Eleven. Eleven. And Yahweh spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the meeting tent. And Moses said unto Yahweh, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this, this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Okay, that's good. So okay. in, in verse 11, okay, it's, it, it says that Yahweh's spoke to Moses as a, as a friend, you see, face-to-face uh, -face as a man to his friend. Mm -hmm. And, and you see, um, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess if you, if you pick it up at seven, it talks about this tabernacle of the congregation. Mm -hmm. um, Pam, could you, could you zoom in on that? That's, a, that's up mm -hmm. next to the burning bush there. Okay. Now, the way I understand it, okay, is that, see, Moses went up into this mountain and he received a vision of the tabernacle. But while the tabernacle was being constructed, okay, and I, and I believe it was 40 weeks, okay, that it took to construct the tabernacle. And uh, at that time, if any man had a matter that they wanted to, to uh, bring to Yahweh, they would go to this meeting tent of the congregation, okay? Yeah. And, and, and you see, uh, so here Moses goes to 
uh, this, this tabernacle of the congregation mm -hmm. and this pillar of a cloud descends and Yahweh talks to Moses. This is in the ninth verse, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and all the people, it said, stood at their doors uh, and, and watched this. You see, it's basically, uh, you know, it, it, it had to be quite the sight. Uh -huh. And it said that Yahweh spoke to Moses face to face as a man does to his friend. Mm -hmm. and, he, and then um, he, he returns back into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, departed not out of the tabernacle. Why? Right. Because that was Yah that's, that's where they went to communicate with Yahweh. Yes. And that was Yahweh. Yes, the fullness of the Godhead bodily manifested in, in Joshua, uh, the son of Nun. Okay, now mm -hmm. uh, read for me Exodus uh, 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 23 and pick it up at 20. Exodus 23 and 20. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Hmm. Okay. Now, whose name, who, who yes. had the name Yahweh back there in him? Yahweh. Joshua. Joshua the son of Nun. And you see, and he yes. was the one he was that angel. It was the angel of Yahweh. Okay. He was the same one that parted that Red Sea. Okay. Moses may have lifted up the rod, but he didn't do any water parting. Okay. It was it was Joshua himself that you see that angel of Yahweh that parted those waters. Okay. And it was the angel of Yahweh that um, Moses went to, you see, at that at that tent of the congregation. And it was the name, it was that angel of Yahweh or Yahshua that led them okay and, and 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 kept them in the way uh to bring, go to that land that yahweh had prepared for them or in other words to bring them into the kingdom all right mm -hmm. and he says that my name is in him okay that name of yashua that yahweh is is right in that name right there mm -hmm. okay now let's go into uh, uh the book of joshua and uh uh Chapter 10 and pick it up at verse 12. Okay. Do you want me to read it, Darlene? Or yes, you please. if you have okay. it. All right. Joshua that, right. 10 and 12. Then say Joshua to Yahweh in the day when Yahweh delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And mm -hmm. he said in the sight of Israel, son, stand thou still upon Gibeon. And thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. Mm -hmm. and the so they're in this battle. So they're in this battle. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the, you see, they're running out of time. Right. Okay, that, that they they need more time to uh, basically uh, win the, the, the battle that, that's going on here. So here is a guy, okay, this Joshua guy, all right, and he can command the sun and the moon to stop in the sky, yeah. all right? Now, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can't even tell you what I'm going to have for breakfast. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Well, actually, I, I actually that one I do know. Uh, Pam made me a uh, uh, little little uh, egg and meat muffins that because uh, otherwise I, I I don't eat very much. And so, mm -hmm. um, but you know, I don't know what I have. I don't know what I'm having for dinner tomorrow. I'll say that much. All right. <laughs> in, in in here, he has. The command of the creation. All right. Yeah. Now go over to Matthew uh, five and, and read. Uh, um, um, I got it. Um, oh, yeah. sorry, go. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. No. What, what I want. What I want. Actually, what I want is Mark four and thirty-seven through forty-one. Sorry. 
Mark four. Mark. Thirty-seven through forty-one. Yep. Okay. Mark one forty-seven. Mark, mark four. You got it. I have it. It's it's Mark um four. And thirty-seven through forty-one. Forty-one. Mm -hmm. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said unto him, Rabbi, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebu rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he so, so here you have that's, okay. that's good. So here you have Joshua commanding the sun and the moon to stop. Mm -hmm. Here is Joshua in fulfillment commanding the creation to see also that he had command over the creation. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, so so um, get for me, please, uh, Joshua uh, twelve and uh, uh, twenty four. Okay, I got that, darling. Okay. Now, the the, the 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 book of Joshua is actually kind of hard to read, okay? Because, I mean, he basically went up there, um, starting with with with, I know a couple of the tribes or a couple of the nations on, mm -hmm. on the one side of the Jordan, but then once they crossed over Jordan, they went into Jericho, and oh. um, the yeah. only people that survived was the harlot Rahab, okay who, by the way, was uh, a descendant of Yahshua the Messiah, as far as, I mean, Ooh. you know, as, as the men would look at it, okay? She, she, she uh, basically, her son, I think, was Boaz, and Boaz and Ruth, I believe, uh, their son was Jesse, and then Jesse's son was David, so that's where mm -hmm. that lineage goes back to, Okay. And she was saved alive in her family. But if you read about what happened to the rest of the people at Jericho, they mm -hmm. slaughtered everybody, children, everything, okay? And they were allowed to keep some of the cattle and they were allowed to keep uh, things like gold and, and different things like that, which went into Yahweh's treasury, okay? But they were ruthless. Yes. Okay. When 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 they went up into to Canaan's land. Okay. Now now keep reading here in Joshua. We're in we're in Joshua twelve and twenty four. Twenty four. Yeah. Twenty four. The king of Tirzah one. All the kings thirty and one. Okay. So thirty one kings were killed in Canaan's land. In mm. two. Uh, on on the uh, the other side of Jordan, so that would make thirty three mm -hmm. kings. Now, how old was Joshua? Thirty three when he took off the flesh. Now, yes. if Joshua the son of Nun killed thirty three kings, wouldn't that make him the king of kings? Of oh, kings. Yes. And see, mm -hmm. Joshua came in and he was the king of kings. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, so you see, you, you read about the, I mean, <laughs> you know, I brought this up a class, uh, our physical class, how that, you know, these people, they got, you know, they got, they got their little Jesus. He's like petting lambs and, you know, hugging kids and, you know, uh, bl blessed are the, the, the peacemakers and all this other kind of stuff. See, and, and, and yes, that's an aspect of him. But let me give you another example of an aspect of, of Yahshua, the Messiah. Okay, go over to John 2 and uh, pick it up at verse 13. So he has, to, so Joshua back here brought them into the kingdom. All right, Joshua back, you see, uh, with the children of Israel, you see, he had command over the creation to stop the sun mm -hmm. and the moon. Joshua comes and fulfills that. See, Joshua back there 
he's the king of kings. So yeah. Yahshua, the Messiah, comes in, and he is the king of kings. Okay. okay? All right? Yeah. Okay. Now. Oh, God, sorry. Go ahead. And when the Passover was at hand, Yahshua went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers money and overthrew the tables and said unto them that sold doves, take these things hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. Now, and he, let me put this in perspective. That's good. That's good. Now, let me put this in perspective. All right. Uh, remember Dennis Allen getting into the temple and showing how huge it was and mm -hmm. how it was filled with people. Okay. There were thousands of people in that temple. And here is one guy. All right. He 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 puts together this 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 threefold cord, and he chases mm -hmm. out a freaking multitude of people out of that yeah. temple. Now you don't hear about them fighting back, okay? I mean this is this this man. You see, this was not somebody you messed with, okay? <laughs> this this was a fierce individual when they came to his father and his father's house. Because see, what they did back there is, you see, you know, under the law, they had to offer up sacrifices, all right, for, for sins and for, for other things, okay? They, they had to offer up offerings. So what, what, what they did is, is instead of somebody, you know, uh, you know, going out to the farm, buying a lamb and bringing it into the temple, Okay, and then offering it up, they made it nice and convenient for them. Okay, they brought all the animals to be sacrificed to the temple area, and then conveniently, you know, charged the price, <laughs> you know, for the, the, the offering up. And you see, that, that, that was not the point of the law. Okay, the point of the law was to offer up a sincere sacrifice unto Yahweh. You go into a money changer and saying, hey, hey, dude, uh, offer up a couple turtle doves for me, okay? And then you walk out, all right? I is that a sincere offering? <laughs> no. It, I don't think so. Is it? So, so here is, here's the, here is back, yeah, back under the law, he, he, just, he just was a fierce warrior, Joshua, the son of Nun. Yes. You see, they were terrified of Yahweh. And, and this is in the book of Joshua that the tribe, uh, starting with, or not the tribe, the nations that were, the, the 33 nations that were up there in Canaan's land, okay, starting with the people in Jericho, they were terrified because they knew what Yahweh had done to the Egyptians. And this was 40 years later. It hadn't left their memory. And then they hear about this Joshua, who, you see, just annihilated those tribes, okay, uh, on uh, the, 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 not tribes, the kingdoms on the side of Jordan, and mm -hmm. then went and annihilated, you see, Jericho, and just went from nation to nation to nation, and just wiped them out. I mean, you're talking, see, this is an aspect of the Holy Spirit. See, this isn't little baby Jesus, Okay. <laughs> This is an aspect of the Holy Spirit that's showing forth that he is fierce uh -huh. and that is not someone to be messed with, okay? And Yahshua, in fulfillment, okay, here he is. He drives out, I mean, I have no idea how many people were in that temple. But if, some, if you were like in a market someplace and somebody had a threefold cord and said, hey, I want all you guys to get out of here, you know, and there was like 10 people there, you go, oh, no way. This this guy ain't gonna, you know, chase anybody out. All right. 
And here he is. He is so fierce that he just, you see, chases all those people, see, out of out of that that kingdom. Okay. Now, um, let me let me. I want to throw out a couple more things here on this. Now, get for me First Samuel six and fourteen. All right. And I'm not going to have a chance to to even come close to finish what I wanted to do. But see, I wanted to show you how that you see. Yahshua in fulfillment is bringing in the kingdom in that he brought in that kingdom back there with the, with the children of Israel, all right? And that it was the same one. It wasn't, you see, and it's, it's no reincarnation or anything like that. That was just Yahweh himself coming down into a physical body and doing the works. He's setting them up back with Joshua, the son of Nun, and he comes in, you see, as Yahshua, the Messiah, and fulfills it. Okay, now uh, this is kind of an interesting. Thing, okay, now what happened was is, dur is during the, the time of the judges. Okay, um, the Ark of the Covenant was was taken uh, away from Israel. Okay, and I forget the, the name of the people that, that that took it. Okay, and what happened was is wherever that Ark was taken, it plagued the people with diseases and. Emrods, I, you know, I don't even know what an emrod is, okay? And that when they put it in their temple, that they came in the next day and th their god Dagon was, was knocked down, okay? And the head was busted off. And so they decided, we got to get rid of this Ark of the Covenant, okay? So they put the Ark on a, on a, on a cart and kind of sent it in the direction of uh, the, the Israelites, okay? And this is where it ended up. Okay, go, go ahead and read this, please. Do you want me to pick it up at 13, Joel, or just write it at 14? Uh, you can pick it up at 13, sure. Okay, um, 1 Samuel 6 and 13. And they of Beth Shemesh were reaping their wheat harvest in the valley, and they lifted up their eyes and saw the ark and rejoiced to see it. And the cart came into the field of Joshua, a Beth Shemite, and stood there where there was a great stone, and they clave the wood of the cart, and offered the kind a burnt offering unto Yahweh. So mm -hmm. when this ark is returned, it's returned to a man whose name is Yahshua. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now it says that he is a Beth Shemite. Now, if you guys know a little bit about Hebrew, you might know that Beth means house. Okay. Now, if you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, Beth Shemite means house of the sun. So the ark is returned to a man named Yahshua, who's a Bethlehemite, or in other words, one who lives in the house of the sun. I just thought that that was just such a cool thing. Okay, now, uh, all right. Now, let me give you an example. So Romans 1, 19 and 20, the physical reveals the spiritual. So this was a while ago, but I, I you know, uh, before we had all these, uh, cable network or not cable networks but these you know like netflix and all that kind of stuff we actually you know like leave the tv on and and stuff was, there were shows that would come on the tv okay because mm -hmm. there was actually channels okay that people uh, uh watch okay so so the tv was on one day and in um uh you know i was just kind of half listening to it and this guy okay on this show was like a historical show says that Joshua won the Civil War. And I went, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? I went, Joshua won the Civil War. And, and, and you know, that, that captured my attention. And it's talking about the American Civil War, okay? Now, there was a man, and you, you may have heard of him because in the, in the movie Gettysburg, they actually keyed in on him. That without this man, the North, would not have won the Civil War. And his name was Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain. All right. Ooh, okay. now, he, he, was, he was a man of great intelligence. Okay, five minutes. Thank you. Um, and he was, he was known for his meekness. He was not a Whoa. braggart or anything like that. He was a college Whoa. teacher. He actually spoke nine languages. Whoa. Okay. And he had... <laughs> He was not going to be drafted or anything like that, but he was, you see, because uh, he was, he was, you know, uh, 
basically was was uh, was going to uh, move from Massachusetts to England to be a professor there because he was so brilliant. Oh. But instead, he chose to stay because he was so against slavery. He volunteered. You see, he didn't have to join. He volunteered to fight in the Civil War. Now, the, the pivotal battle of the Civil War was Gettysburg. Everybody's heard of Get, Gettysburg. Right. But you see, what happened was, is him in a small group of soldiers that were under him uh, in, in, uh, in this battle, okay, they, the, 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 they, were, they were gonna get flanked by the Confederates. Okay, and they were at this, this on top of the, the, this, this high ground called Little Round Top. Okay, and mm -hmm. they were here was a small group of men, and they were against a huge superior force of men. And during the battle, the battle was so heated that, uh, and so much ammunition was fired that it sheared all the trees off in the battle sure. area. Wow, that's sure. how much lead. Flew. Mm -hmm. To this day, they can still find bullets. Okay. Now, so here, here they are, the small group, and they're out of ammunition, and the enemy is 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 on them. So what does this guy do? He didn't retreat. He told them to fix their bayonets and had them charge the Confederate. And the charge was so uh, impressive and so terrifying that the Confederates threw down their weapons and gave up. Oh. And in, this his, in this history thing, if they wouldn't have done that, the Confederates would have flanked them and they would have lost the Battle of Gettysburg and we would have a, a, a United States, two United States of America, the South and the North. Okay. And, and and the way they described it, the way he set it, the way he set it up was, was that they charged directly at them. Now, 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 look at they're charging men who are mm. shooting at them. They have no bullets. And then another group came around, and they described it as the closing of a door, the maneuver. Mm. And you see, Joshua is that door. Mm. And so here you have an example of this man. Now. This man later on during the Civil War was wounded and was given up for dead. Now the place he was wounded at was a place called Jerusalem Plank Road. And he, he was so sure that he was going to die, he wrote a letter to his wife to say goodbye. Now, you know what happened. He went through a death burial and he resurrected in Jerusalem. Okay, now this is an example in the physical creation. Okay, let me give you another example. Um, you guys have probably heard of Flight 1549 with Sully Sullivan the, the, that, uh, that landed, you see that airplane in the Hudson River in New York? Yes, um, yes. yes. Yeah, you yes. heard about that? Yes. Yeah, well, there was a guy there that they don't talk about too much, okay? When he landed that, that, that plane on the Hudson River, the people couldn't get out of the plane. So there was a guy whose name was Joshua, and Joshua, he read the book on how to open the door, and he opened the door so that the people could get out of the plane, okay? <laughs> now, okay, now I have, I have one minute, okay? Now, there's also another example, okay, and that's Joshua Tree. Now, Joshua Tree are ancient but they don't have rings. So they're like the son of none. They have no beginning of life nor yes. ending of day, okay? And you see, uh, you can work with Melchizedek and stuff like that, but these Joshua trees have sword-shaped leaves and the trees are known for red dye. And it's also a place where the Indians would find water. So you got red dye or blood, you got water, you got spirit, you got sword, okay? And, and also, you see, uh, th th there's a natural progesterone that these trees give off that you see will fight bleeding disorders in women. Okay, oh, the Indian women knew about that. And so don't you have Yashua where the woman came and touched the hem of his garment 
and had that issue of blood for 12 years. Yes. So this tree, this Joshua tree can, you see, all you have to do is touch the hem of its garment, okay, in principle, all right? Now, I'm out of time. I didn't get a chance to get back into the kingdom, uh, but, but you have, you see, it was Joshua back there that, that brought Israel up into the kingdom, okay? And he was that king of kings. Yes. And then, then, you see, that was all setting up principle for Yahshua the Messiah to come in, you see, and to bring in a, a, a better kingdom, not a physical kingdom. A, and, and, and we know that the kingdom of Yahweh, you see, in, in Romans, is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what the kingdom is now. And that's what that's what we've got down here in the, these classes. That's what we've been blessed with. So I hope you got something out of that. Um, I hope it wasn't all, you know, review because everybody's heard all about Joshua, you know. But uh, I, I just I just I, I'm like I'm like Sarah. It's just one of my, my my favorite things in the book, the Joshua with Joshua. And I remember some of the old folks in class uh, uh, telling me. Um, that Dr. Kinley said that the greatest mystery in the Bible was that Joshua was Joshua. And uh, that's, a, that's a pretty amazing uh, mystery. So uh, thank you for the time. Hallelujah. That concludes our lecture for this evening. Um, if you have any questions, please hold on until after the doxology and you can talk to the speakers then. We have classes on Sundays from 11 to 1 at 6615 Sheldon Road in person. And we still have classes here on Zoom on Wednesdays from 7 to 9. We will be dismissed with the doxology taken from the last two verses of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, long glory and majesty, dominion and power, before all times, now and ever, let us all say, Hallelujah.